Hey, everybody, welcome. It's so great to have all of you tune us in and turn us on. And, you know, one of the things I love is um, I love to really be able to go from one show where we're talking about, you know, ancient hieroglyphics and information and just fascination about how so much knowledge has been preserved for us by, by civilizations that didn't even know or maybe didn't know that humanity would still exist, that they would get through uh, the Ice Age. And so yet here we are, and we talk about that. And I was really struck by getting ready to talk to Amanda Huggins today and, and talking about anxiety. Because if you connect the dots from, a, some, from ancient civilizations that knew that their time would be up, but yet felt so in tune to preserve what they've learned. And you bring us to where we are today. And a um, text message I get on my phone, you know, that keeps me informed of things that are going on in the world. And then you get a text message that says, we are now at the highest homeless rate that we have ever been at. And I can't remember, it was either 5.6 nationally, um, and then you look at different places, like, for example, Colorado. Oh, and many of us would be like, we think in the Pacific Northwest, we're like, we think we're number one, but we're actually may not be. And there are so many other places. But then you think about a new study that then says Colorado. And we never think of Colorado as in the top 10 or top 15. Uh, of places. And then you start to think, how? How? What is underneath this? How, how do we wrap ourselves around providing solutions for people? Um, Minnesota, you never think Minnesota is going to be 16th for homelessness in 2021. I didn't. You know, maybe because I lived on the East Coast and now I'm on the West Coast. And you're thinking to yourself, if you are going to be homeless, probably California or Hawaii. But then you start to see the landscape of what seems to be happening. And if you are Amanda, you take on the tough conversations and you help people as a respected anxiety and mindfulness coach, certified yoga instructor, which we're going to talk about today too, a writer, keynote speaker, somebody that has been out there to set open this space that is usually stems from each and every one of us, our own personal journey, and then comes forward to say, wait a minute, what have we learned about anxiety and what is the truth about it? Today, is your anxiety lying to you? And my very, very special guest, Amanda Huggins. Amanda, great to have you. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much, Pat. I'm so excited to be here. You know, I think every one of us that shows up in this space has a story of some kind or a direction of some kind. And it usually, and I've told my story many times on how my personal and family um, um, how should I say, uh, history and patterns, you know, got me interested in understand the human psyche. I mean, if it wasn't for growing up in that family, I probably wouldn't be here today. But I have to know, you know, I just briefly talked about a little bit about what you, I would love to know what touched your heart, what challenges, what obstacles um, showed up for you that you had to overcome to like bring you now here to this very moment? Yeah, you know, I, I, I like that question. And it's, it's not so simple as one specific thing that <laughs> happened. And I think that's the case for many people who are struggling with whether it's anxiety or depression or any combination of mental health struggles is it's often a series of small events that we allow to snowball. And if I have to pinpoint a particular period of time in my journey, I would say um, 
from the outside, it was a period of time that looked quite normal. I was in my uh, early to mid twenties. It looked like I was happy, well-traveled, good job. And that actually created the biggest disconnect of all because on the inside, I was absolutely crumbling. There were uh, a slew of body dysmorphia issues that I was working through, eating disorders. I was masking deep an enormous depression in a job that I hated. I was in a, a, an abusive relationship. And so it really was this perfect storm. And there were quite a few different points in time. I, I lovingly joke around with myself and say, I had a couple of rock bottoms um, <laughs> that I'm, I'm gratefully past, but it was, it was really in those moments where I had to step outside of myself and say, okay, you know that this isn't all that life has to offer you know that this isn't core you, how do we get back to that person? Or how do we maybe not get back to her? How do we find her to begin with? Yeah. And, you know, I love the way that you answered that question. And it's been a question I've been asking 17 years, because when I first started doing this, I, I was at another bottom <laughs> again. And this was a gift that the universe had show up for me. But the reason I'm asking that question is because I really feel that people want to know they're not alone now. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. That you and I are just not on here talking about stuff we have no experience with. No. And yet at the same time, anxiety could be both seductive and elusive. Yes. Can you talk about this? lion can't curse on air lion you know what called anxiety <laughs> yes and i can i can fill in the blanks in fill my in own the mind there then um, he's got his hand on the button thank you very much ladies I <laughs> ready to fire <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll start here yeah i think that anxiety especially right now we're socially environmentally we're just in such a, a strange time with anxiety one of the things you mentioned the word seductive, which is why I go here first, is we actually see anxiety depicted in the media, whether it's in memes on social media or quirky characters with anxiety. We see it almost as this thing like, oh, it's it's super normal. Don't worry about it. Right. And that's a half truth in the sense that it is absolutely normal. And I don't want people to worry about it. But I also think that there's a certain level of conditioning where we're all okay with sweeping it under the rug. And that's a dangerous place to be. And I've certainly found myself there where I'm like, well, if everyone's feeling like this, I guess this is just what it is to be an adult, at least an adult in America. And this is where it becomes elusive is anxiety is really an umbrella term, or at least that's the way I like to look at it. Because once we move past understanding and working through the physical symptoms, well, then we have to unpack the root, whether that is guilt, grief, shame, fear, it, it, you know, limiting beliefs. There, there's so much that is connected to anxiety. And that's actually what we want to go into. That's also the harder work, which is why most of us like to avoid it. I, under, I avoided it for years. You know, it's fascinating. I want to give you a real life example, because I think yes. this really does talk to what you're saying, because we're going to really take a deeper dive into this. And it has to do with what you talk about when you say truth and story. And I and there are a couple of other uh, there are other patterns and words that we use, but I'm moving my home. And so I've been in this great place with, you know, close to friends for 14 years. Right. Um, but life changes, things change, people rearrange their priorities, and sometimes you have to make a change. And in my case, you know, where I'm living is going to be used for something else. So I said to, I said, made this statement, hey, I'm moving. Um, could use some help. Going to do it in two parts. That was the end of my thought. I'm moving. I need help with the boxes, people. Mm -hmm. The moving truck. Yeah. That was the end. But then there came a story, not by me. Oh my gosh, you're really moving. What is it like? You've been there for 14 years. You know, were you moving far? How's that going to feel? And I'm like, my head's going to explode right now. Yeah. I mean, it's enough to me. You can't see it because they're over there, a wall full of boxes, right? You can only see the fireplace back here. But for me, it's like I'm moving and I need help. I think we have become very susceptible to story. What's your thoughts on that? 
Oh, absolutely. And you actually opened up a conversation about another layer of story, which is once we have an anxious thought or have the truth, when we share that with other people or we engage with other people, that can fuel more stories and more triggers. When we, when we look at the individual experience, I always use this, I, I like to use myself as an example. It's never to like talk about myself so much as it's to just demonstrate really clearly. And, and I, I worked in technology for a really long time and I worked at a startup. We were not a super successful startup. And my boss walked in one morning, a dear friend, and he did not say hi to me. So in that moment, the truth was simply, he didn't say hi to me. The story I immediately jumped to was I'm getting fired. And what's interesting about that is if I chose to, and I did in that moment, there were a ton of, of environmental cues that could validate that story. We were not doing well. I knew that there were cuts on the team. So story can also become very elusive because if you want to find validation for it, you will. And I also think it's really interesting. I don't know how intentional this was on your part, but even when you opened up today's episode with a reference to a previous conversation about like hieroglyphs and just ancient behaviors, anxiety and really this idea of story of looking for the negative, that is actually an ancient behavior. That was self-preservation for us at totally. one point. Now it's all psychosocial and we're <laughs> quote unquote, dropping into self-preservation, but really we're just looking for problems for ourselves. You know, we're going to talk about this when we come back, because I was uh, it, I was talking with uh, Dr. Robert Chalk. I mean, the world's most, you know, leading on sun and the sun itself. And we were talking about exactly this, but not the way you framed it. That was brilliant, the way you framed it. I wish I would have talked to you first, then I would talk to him. <laughs> but there was had to be a level of anxiety in ancient civilizations. And, and let me call it, ex, ex, is there such a thing as healthy anxiety? I don't know. I want Absolutely. you to talk about this. Absolutely. But there had to be a, a sense of that because they knew the Ice Age was coming. So here's what they did at uh, uh, to Beckley uh, Tepe. What they did is they built a contain, they built the, the container, they built it underground, they built the circles, then they built a layer on it, then they built another layer, then they covered it up to yeah. preserve it for a civilization that they weren't sure was going to exist. Brilliant. That's kind of like a healthy thing, I think. Absolutely. So right? the root of, one of the roots, and it depends if we want to look at this more energetically, spiritually, or physically, but if we look physically for a second, anxiety, the, the human experience of it is rooted in our fight or flight response. Fight or flight is a key component of self-preservation. It's, it's instinctual. So that civilization that you're talking about, to a certain degree, that was an instinct. And when you think about like any core species, all of our instincts are preserve our species, self-preservation, safety. Um, I do think that's a healthy level of anxiety. And in modern day, we can have healthy expressions of anxiety. That is when our anxiety is telling us something that we need to look at and grow from. The shift yeah. is we don't need the intensity and the duration to be as extreme as, as so many of us allow it to be. Yeah. And by the way, what happens with the headline that I just gave about homelessness? You and I are going to talk about that when we come back. What happens when I get 10 text messages about something that is important to me because I was homeless at 17? So it's important to me. It's in my mm -hmm. DNA to really do something about that. Although I don't always know every day what to do, but why is it important to talk about it? And is there a place you go with a story that takes you to the dark side? Even the sun has a dark side. When we come back, I'm not gonna answer that question. I'm gonna turn that right over to my very special guest, Amanda Huggins, everybody, when we come back, talking about anxiety, talking about patterns and talking about what you can do. Does the truth set us free? And we are taking your calls, 1-800-930-2819. We'll be right back, Benny.
Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. I, you know, look, we are taking your questions today and comments today um, because, you know, whenever um, whenever we do a show like this, especially with Amanda, Amanda, you know, it is not a show for just she and I to be talking about a bunch of things. If there is something heavy on your mind, if there is something that maybe you want to weigh in on, um, whatever that is, you know, and you've known this for 17 years, my phone line is always open on the show. And if you don't want to come on air, give Benny your question or Jacob on Facebook, 1-800-930-2819. Um, Amanda, before we roll again, I want to make sure people, one, know how to find out more about you, two, how they could work work with you because you're an anxiety mindfulness coach and much more. So give people that information. I want to make sure we mention that a bunch of times. Thank you. Yeah. My website is pretty easy to remember. It's amandahugginscoaching.com. So first name, last name, and what I do.com. Um, that's where you'll find any information about programs, working with me. And right now um, I'm offering a free grounding meditation. So you'll sign up with a pop-up. We'll email that to you. And that's all yours to enjoy. Thank you so much for all that you do. Um, I know that we're adding a little humor to this because honestly, when I think about some of my life and my life history, it just, this, some of this is just so hysterical. You have um, to laugh. Yeah, it, it's hysterical and it's comedic. I mean, I think about the many times I came close to not being on this earth. I mean, I do. And, and it wasn't until maybe 10 years ago, did the light bulb go on where the dots got connected for me, where I thought we've got to help other people. Maybe not everybody's homeless, but maybe you have addiction in your family. Maybe there's a conversation I can have with you. Maybe you want to be a successful business person, have a great corporate career. career. Maybe we can help you with that. That's what you're doing here. You know, yeah. my sense of you is you're here to not have people go through 30 years like I went through for the light bulb to go on. What do you think the greatest challenges are from so far for you and what you've discovered with anxiety? What are the greatest challenges and what are the greatest observations that you've made? Oh, that's a great question. You know, let's start with the humorous lens for a second. Because yes, let's I, do that. I, I joke with myself and my clients is anytime uh, something tough or difficult happens, even now, I'm like, I got to have the lesson first before I, I teach people how to work through it, um, which is a blessing and a curse. And sometimes I look up at the universe and I'm like, can I not be the punching bag for, for a day? Uh, but, I, you know, it's not so much a punching bag. I use that, that term pretty lightly. Um, in terms of greatest observations, it's not that, I think there can be a lot of cynicism in the world and, and we it's very easy to look out with a lens of judgment and say, oh, that person's not helping themselves or that person's rolling in their victim mindset or it, we can place judgment and blame however we want. From the thousands of people that I have talked to and, and worked with at this point, it is not that most people don't want to feel better they don't want to help themselves. It's that most people don't know how yet. And that's why talking about anxiety and sharing how you can work through it is so near and dear to my heart is there are tools available. There are things that we can do and there's really deep insights that we can glean from the anxious experiences we're having, but we've got to talk about it. And we've got, we've got to bring that, those tools to a greater awareness, really. So I, I, th I think that's probably the biggest insight. Um, and then as you and I were talking about off air, everything is, is workable. And our life experience, whether good, bad, or neutral, it's, it was given to us for a reason. And so as we work through our anxiety, we also have the opportunity to move closer towards our purpose, whatever that might be. You know, that leads me to a, a question for you. And I know it's been a journey for us um, and we're going through it right now. And, you know, there used to be a conversation called truth or dare. And now you talk about truth and story. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask you about when truth 
and anxiety are the same. Meaning, is there a point where when anxiety shows that up, it's also truth? Does that make sense, that question? That that makes perfect sense. Okay. And we're in a time right now where that question comes up quite often. Uh, when we look around right now, we're still in the middle of a pandemic. So there's a lot of health-related anxiety or just general fear about the state of the world. And you can look out and say, yes, we're in, we're in interesting or as much as I hate this term at this point, unprecedented times, <laughs> insert the biggest eye roll in the world. Um, there's, there is truth to that. So then it becomes a question of inner control. And then if there's action that we can take. So when you cannot control external environments that are eliciting anxiety, you've got to look inward and say, okay, how much of my emotional, spiritual, physical state can I control, support, and really nurture and love? And then if there is action that I can take that will help me and you had mentioned homelessness, and we were also talking about this off air. I think that's an yeah. excellent example of this. Yeah. Will Will you independently solve homelessness across the entire country? I wish, right? But this has got to oh. be a team effort here. <laughs> no, I but don't think so. We can look at those anxious calls, and there's there's at least two clear opportunities there. One is when we have this direct connection to something causing us anxiety, we can look in and ask that question, do, do I as a spirit require deeper healing here? And then if this is something that is community-based, are is there anything that I have to offer? And it doesn't have to be financial support. It can be, can I show up to um, you know a neighborhood cleanup? I'm using that as an example, but is there something tactical that I can do? When we drop ourselves into service, we're raising our frequency, we are raising our vibration, and we are in support of other people. That is not going to be a cure for the big anxiety things, yeah. but yeah. it brings us into a state where we can enact change, and that's what's important. Yeah. I want to give you a real life example because Ooh. I've got you here. Yes, and please. It seems like the most benign example to give. Um, I'm in media, Benny. I'm, we are on an AM FM station here, plus you're on the Transformation Network is the network that I founded 11 years ago. You're also on the Dr. Pat show. We're on like a hundred different places. I don't even know where. And I've been doing this, my show for 17 years. I've never really, except for the cussing part, which Benny reminds me of, like, cause we are on an FCC deal here. I've never really had to worry about stuff I said. I mean, I've talked about the many faces of Lyme disease. I was a Lyme disease advocate way before people were talking about it. I talked about the fact that it's called the great imposter. If I were to do that show today, given the new guidelines now on social media and on video producing live streaming video channels, they would send me a warning Mm -hmm. about medical misinformation. Yeah. And I have never felt anxious about my voice. And it's not just me, because what's happening with this is really interesting. It's creating a ripple effect. We have hosts, we have callers that call into the show, they express their opinion. And it's as if we're being watched and monitored. And here's the irony of it all. My AMFM station just sent a memo out saying, read the guidelines. You can't say this. You can't say this. And it's especially around the vaccine. And I'm not, I don't have an opinion for anyone other than myself about the vaccine. That's not what I do. But it was interesting. One of our shows got flagged for a conversation about it. Yeah. Only for the next day, the headlines about, about that particular vaccine saying we're gonna pull it from the market. And so there is an anxiety around speaking truth and I'm giving you a major impact, but in our everyday language with each other, we are not sure, do I say this at work? Do I don't say, do I say it to my mom? Do I not? And I gotta ask you about this. This is a new kind of anxiety I'm sensing in our, our country. I don't know what your thoughts are. Absolutely. Yeah. Everything that you said, I, 
I, now I'm a little hesitant to even speak to the vaccine because yeah, I don't, don't want talk to, get to the you, vaccine. Oh my gosh, I don't I'm want not going to get you kicked off air. Please, uh, folks, that you're monitoring this show, we are not talking about the vaccine. We're not right talking here. about Just it. Just saying, we ain't talking about it. We don't have an opinion today. Correct. Um, yeah, I echo. I, I echo that in understanding. Uh, I can certainly speak to the internet and social media and seems like every day there is someone new getting um the term is canceled which just means <laughs> all day yeah don't love it um so some people rightfully so but then others you know they they make a comment or share an opinion and all of a sudden they are perhaps not banned from the internet but reputations pulled down and you know getting messaged really horrible things and there is a rising censorship that's happening. And I, I, like anything, there is a light and dark and a good and bad. I think absolutely there are degrees of monitoring and gut checking with people to say, hey, is, is what you're sharing in the best and highest good? Um, but what's happening is, you know, the pendulum has swing, swung so far in one direction that for those of us, perhaps you and I, who what we talk about is quite normal to us, but it might be considered <laughs> fringe for people. Um, I think specifically within our world, there is a little bit of hesitancy or anxiety yeah. sometimes because you know that there is going to be contrasting opinions reflected back towards you. And yeah. to that, you know, if that resonates with anyone listening, yeah. I would just say when you are in your truth and when you are in authenticity and I'm going to use that phrase again, highest and best good, when you are sharing from that place, and the anxiety comes up, drop a little deeper into your spirit. Yeah. I am doing this for the good. Yeah. And if you can't drop into that alignment, maybe then you've got to check yourself to say, okay, do I believe in what I'm sharing? Yeah. But that's the kind of anxiety I think it can, it can mirror an opportunity for us to really come to a deeper resolve with what we believe. And I, the reason I brought it up is because it leads me to the next point I want to talk to you about. And there, there is a connect the dots moment here. Um, I happen to find it in almost ever. I'm afraid to even mention the V word. That used to be vagina, but it's different now. Benny, are you going to bleep me for that? Um, Why? It's a medical term. That's what thank we're Thank you, Benny. Do. Yes, you that's a awesome. medical term. That's what I'm it here. is. But it's, I, I don't even want to mention it. And, and what I'm finding is it's not just on air. And again, you're right. I am soul searching, this kid, protester you know, stonewall kid, I am just looking at me and saying, what's going on inside of there? And yet, what I'm picking up on for you to talk about is this strange bedfellow that hops into bed with anxiety, and it starts with an F. It's fear. Mm -hmm. And when does anxiety, like we're talking about, what happens if my family asks me at Thanksgiving dinner if I've gotten the V? Mm -hmm. Do I tell them the truth? Do I not tell them the truth? And what I'm trying to say is, what happens when fear and anxiety get together? What is the impact of that? And how much does mindset either take us down the spiral or help us keep sane? I'm going to take a short break. When we come back, that and much more. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. It's so great to have all of you tune us in and turn us on. We are talking today about, and you know, is your anxiety lying to you? And we have a couple of things we've already talked about where we pointed out maybe not. Uh, my very special guest, Amanda Huggins, joining me here today. Amanda, one more time. How do people find out about you? How do they connect with you? How do they work with you? Everything is on my website. It is amandahuggingscoaching.com. So first name, last name, and then what I do. And when you visit my website, we will email you a free 10-minute meditation on the root chakra, which is arguably my favorite chakra to work oh, with. Boy. <laughs> if you don't get we it, all need some you don't grounding. get the root rolling, you just ain't going to get rolling. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you. And thank you for joining us here today. During a break, I was talking about a line that sometimes in my life I know I've crossed. And I think our listeners can relate to this. I'm like you. Um, 
I don't like to always talk ab about myself, but I got a couple of emails a number of years back from listeners that are like, we, we don't know what you're saying. Did you go through this in life? Did you have that life experience? And so I started to talk more about it. But there's this interesting dynamic that you address, and it is the relationship between fear and anxiety. And I was talking to you about, during break, about a situation. If I'd handled that situation differently, I'd have gone down a rabbit hole. And I'm not sure if fear would have blown anxiety. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. I would like you to talk about the relationship, but also what we can do to check it, right? Yes. Yes. So you've probably heard this or used this phrase yourself, which is everything in the universe can be divided into either fear or love. Yeah. <laughs> and I really love that. It's a little binary. I think there's other, other things afloat too, but when we choose to look at it like that, our anxiety kind of brings this message to us. So I'm going to use a personal example um, and it'll be fairly benign, but when I was in this state of really deep body dysmorphia and yeah, I was living in LA, you kind of get fed a perfect picture of what you quote unquote should like, and it's just unbelievably toxic. And my anxiety, that was one of the places in which it was speaking to me. I went down the fully le uh, leaning into the fear of it. I would have continued to perpetuate the dysmorphia, a lot of my negative and avoidance-based behaviors. And I did for a little while, but, and this is the beautiful thing about the human spirit is I don't believe that we can live in fear for all that long. I think we, we can roll around in it for sure, but at some point we kind of get sick and tired of it. And that's that opportunity to choose love or self-love. And that's when we start tuning back inward and dropping into nurturing practices. Now, this is an example that is inner, right? It's, it, that was me with me. So what, what about when it's situational? You had brought up like having a, a fear-based conversation with your parents or maybe a coworker. That's a really interesting example because once we start sharing, uh, there's a conversation we're anxious about and we have to share that with someone else. We're going to start dropping into stories about how they might receive it. We're going to potentially drop into story about our own worth and our own value in our voice. That is all fear, but we can use that as an opportunity to look around the corner and say, well, how could this also be love-based? What could this conversation look like if I stay really true to myself? What do I need to do to take care of myself so that I can show up for this conversation? A lot of that, when we're talking about within the person, it's nurturing, it's deep breathing, it's dropping into an understanding of what your truths are and then reconnecting with them. And, you know, I want to talk about this for a minute because there's a, there's a level of, and maybe you can address this very specifically, I call it like a little um, electrical shock mm -hmm. that I get, right? You know, you ever been like, I don't know, like friction on the rug and you go like, oh, and then you touch oh, somebody, yeah. it's like, oh, and then it's like there and it's gone. And so there are things in my life that I know do that for me. I don't stay with them, but they're important to me. Um, one of them is rights for people's rights. My stepmom groomed us like that. We marched on places that I never even understood why we marched. And I, I always wondered, my stepmom, blonde, beautiful, young stepmom, my dad was like 30 years older, um, beautiful, puffing the cigarette, walking down the street, and we are the only white people in that group. And never really thought about that that way. And I look back, homeless. So when I read a statistic, I don't go down the pathway, but I ask myself, could I be doing more? How do we value the knowledge we get from what I call those little tinges, right? The little electric shock that I, I feel it's, it hits me in my heart. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. It, it just gets me in my heart. Now, there are some that get me in my heart and they just don't leave. And mm -hmm. I gotta be like, God, you gotta help me with this one because this is like killing me. But are those moments to move us forward for a purpose greater than ourselves? 
Absolutely. And it becomes very nuanced too. You, you yes. said, I might butcher the exact phrasing of what you just said, but it's good. you spoke indirectly to this question of enoughness. Am I doing enough? Am I showing up enough? That is where I think it gets really nuanced is yeah. we have to look at our enoughness as inherent and intrinsic and most of the time when we're in a state of anxiety, we're, we're viewing our enoughness as below the line. So if we want to show up to a cause or show up to our community and we're, we're in that state of anxiety, we're always going to be locked in that because it's, I'm not enough. I'm never going to do enough. So the, the work is actually a step before that is to separate from anything else going on in the world to build up this. And this is, I wish it was a, a light bulb thing. It was just a quick switch and we're there but to build that enoughness so that when you are presented with opportunities in which you can show up to community or show up to support and move towards purpose, you're doing it from a grounded place where you're not going to question your efforts. So in other words, your cup is full and you can actually pour from it instead yes. of half empty cup. And you're like, where, where's my water going to come from? How am I going to pour into this community now? Right. Yeah. Like the food bank doesn't have any food for infants. Okay. Get out your checkbook. Yeah. <laughs> like that. Yeah. Um, and you know, this is really, I want to ask you about this in the time we have left. We're talking about this because it represents a large community of people right now that are maybe not completely here, but over, and how do we know it? We know it. Let's go to statistics. We know it by the alcohol online purchase rate. We know it by the uh, percentage of online snacks that are now being bought. I mean, there are just so many yeah. indicators that we have a sense of it. Online and shopping. So, online shopping. So we have a sense of this, right? Online gambling. I mean, we could go on about it. So we have a sense of it. The question now is that we, you and I are having this conversation because we want to help people with this, yeah. not because we just want to talk about it. What have you found some of the solutions in the work that you do? Some of the things you've been able to help people uh, with by doing different things or by learning different things. What have you, what have you learned? So uh, at a high level, the biggest learning is probably the, the most uncomfortable, which is understanding and then learning to work with your anxiety is not necessarily an easy path because often it means that you need to process trauma and you need to learn how to move out of avoidance, all of those things that you just mentioned. So to get a little bit deeper, how do you actually do that? And how do you start moving out of avoidance? You have got to seek help first. And that means clearing the ego. That help may be in the form of a therapist or a coach or a group program, but any, any dynamic where you're able to share without judgment is hyper important because we're in, we're in so much avoidance that we're barely admitting things to ourselves. So you've got to get over that uncomfortable barrier and start sharing, period. And then from there, it's the oldest trick in the book, but you've got to start journaling and and not just dear diary, this is what I'm doing today, but the type of questions that, which I love, I, I still support doing that, but questions that allow you to go a little bit deeper into the oh, yeah. unconscious. Where does this come from? What can I do next? If there were no limits on who I can be, what, what would that person look like? Like have fun with it, but also don't lose the depth. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it really does enable us to really have that conversation with our, ourselves. Yeah. And boy, the relief in that, you know, and especially in, I, I mean, I work with a number of coaches because I have to have a sounding board. Yeah. You know, I have to be able to say, you know, from a business perspective, this is what I think. And then I hop over to spiritual perspective and I say, what do you think? And they say, give that to God. And yeah. okay, uh, uh, really? Uh, and yeah, really. Um, and, you know, this is part of what you do is help people understand that we are so much more, you know, Matt James, a friend of mine said to me many years ago, Pat, whatever you think you are, you're more than that. And he said to everybody listening, whatever you think you are, everybody, this is his phrase, whatever you think you are, you're more than that. And I never forgot that. He didn't say you're X amount more or, you know what I mean? Yeah. 
and I just love that um, because it gives us a sense that we are so resilient, even when we think we're not. But we do need to learn some new tools, don't we? We absolutely do. Neural reprogramming is really one of the, and I'm a big fan of spiritual and scientific and the blend between them. Yeah, me too. This is, this is where neural reprogramming is like yep. the sweet spot because you have the data to show you can absolutely rewire your brain and it lends itself to, well, you've also got to connect with your higher self. You've also <laughs> got to see your enoughness and start to give yourself permission to envision who you want to become. And, and that, even if we took anxiety as a title out of this conversation, that is the gist of quote unquote anxiety management. It is retraining your brain into not fake believing or fake understanding into knowing your enoughness and then creating life from that point. That's where you can show up to other people. That's where you show up to yourself the best, but you've got to believe it first. Yeah. You know, this is an important body of work. I mean, and I want to just honor you on that pathway um, because many of us, you know, when we wake up every day, we don't stop and say, oh, how did I get here? How did I sign up for this? You know, I know from my life experiences that I, my meditation, I say, God, what is mine to do today? And then I do it. Sometimes it's pack a box because mm -hmm. I'm moving. Sometimes it's have a great conversation with Amanda Huggins, go ahead and do that. Sometimes it's make sure you lean into what your listeners really need help with, if you could know that. Yeah. Um, but in any case, we are divinely guided. How Always. do we best hone in that now? Because I think that is the most powerful tool we have. It absolutely is. I, I start my day with three questions, and this is not like a you don't, you don't need your journal. You just need your eyes open or close. It doesn't matter. Right. How do I feel in this moment? What does my mind think I need to do? And then what is my spirit asking of me today? And it's important to look at what the mind, often the ego is saying, I have to do my to-do list and I have to do this and that. And to open up the dialogue first within your spirit. And then that conversation opens it up to that larger question. How can I be guided today? And there's also just got to be, especially I, I know for myself, I was like, you know, younger in my journey, oh, that stuff's not real. <laughs> no, it is. And I think for anyone, regardless of where you may be at in your journey, there's nothing wrong with self-reflection to, to look back at the, the incredible things that have happened and use them as confirmation or reminders that you've been guided even in, even in those really difficult moments that you were still being looked after. And so if that were, if that's been true up until now, why wouldn't it be true today forward? And that's what you lean into is, well, it's always been here. It's going to be here tomorrow. And then you nurture it. And you get the message, whatever way you get it, you yes. get the pathway, whatever way you get it. What you just shared is going to touch somebody. Um, I got an email from a listener. Oh, it had to be a bunch of years ago when I shared the story of, I was asked, I was interviewed and asked what was a pivotal moment in my life? When did mm -hmm. a light bulb go on? And you know, there've been many. And I think I probably wouldn't answer the question the same way. But at that time I said, you know when it was? It's when I had a 69 Firebird, brand new, one month old. And I was angry driving down Route 22. I had somebody in the car who I was angry at. And I, for whatever reason, a car cut me off and I hit a telephone pole. And the car door on my side bent out. And the cop said to me, if that door would have been hit one half inch the other direction, everybody would be dead. And, you know, that something about that and my relationship with anger changed from that point on. Now, I got to tell you, it wasn't overnight. I had a whole lot. But we have to look for these moments where we believe in ourselves and we recognize 
that there isn't any emotion that is out there that would cause us to hit a telephone pole that would be worth it. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. I, you know, and I spent a lot of years trying to find one. <laughs> yep. I want to thank you for today. Um, first, uh, tell folks again how they can work with you. Tell them a bit about some of the videos that you offer as well. Those are kind of cool. Uh, and also, um, you know, what's the best way for people to contact you? Yeah. So the best way to find me is on my website. It's amandahugginscoaching.com. You'll get information about direct one-on-one -on -one coaching, a couple of group programs. And then when you sign up for my email list, you'll get a free root chakra meditation. It's only about 10 minutes. So it's, I'm partial, but I'm a big fan of it. It's a nice way to wake up. <laughs> It is a nice way to wake up because, you know, <laughs> why not bed. wake up with Amanda? <laughs> <laughs> uh, one last question for you. Um, I want to know what your personal message is. You know, we've talked a about a lot of things today, um, a lot of wonderful messages and what you brought forward, a new way for us to really build a relationship with both our anxiety our, and our fear and also with ourselves. And I'd love to know what your personal message is, what you'd like to leave us with today. That you can change the way that your life looks by changing the way that your mind works. And that requires curiosity, grace, compassion, and deep listening. But regardless of what emotional state you find yourself in, whether it is anxiety or like you just mentioned, this, this holy anger is what I like to look at anger as there's messages and as as dark or as dire as it might feel in that moment it is a message for your growth and it's a message of love so do not lean into the fear lean back into yourself awesome please give out your website one more time amandahugginscoaching.com you know thank you so much for everything that you're doing thank you for not only you know, you bringing forward your personal messages and sharing the depth of what your experience is, but also for being there for people in a time that people don't even know that they need help. Mm -hmm. You know, they have a sense of it, Amanda, but this is where you're bringing your message out to them. And I, I so appreciate you. Thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you so much, Dr. Pat. It was a pleasure. Uh, Amanda Huggins, everybody, lots of information on our website, lots of information for us to learn from, but also for things for us to do. You know, we're living in a world where energy is passing through us day and night. And what if you could learn a few things that Amanda just shared today in the show? What if there was a nugget that you heard today that would just help you hit the pause button? Just do that. Thank you all. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you all for tuning us in and turning us on. Kudos to Benny. I don't know how many times you may have had to hit that button today, but I think we're pretty good. Thank you for Jacob for all that you're doing. And remember everyone that we can, we can get deeply into the truth and change our lives. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.